Hi, I'm Todd Jones, host of the podcast Press Box Access. Here's a clip from my interview with Rick Cleveland. Rick tells us about covering Walter Payton as a high school player in Mississippi, later at Jackson State, and then during his incredible NFL career. You mentioned uh, Walter Payton in high school. Uh, do you remember your first memory, seeing Walter as a reporter? You know, Columbia was on the outskirts of our high school coverage, so we had a stringer over there who called in the reports of all the little high schools in, in Marion County, which is about mm-hmm. 30 miles, and, and the woman's name was Eva B. Beats. And every Friday night, I would get the call from her, and, and she always asked for me, and she called me Ricky, and she said, Ricky? And she always started like this. She said, Ricky, you ain't going to believe what that Peyton boy did tonight. <laughs> I'll never forget that. And on the last game of his senior season, she said that she started it out that way. And then she said, Walter scored seven touchdowns. And on the last one, he ran the last 35 yards backwards. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's spectacular. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and that's also why none of the three Division One, predominantly white, historically white universities, didn't recruit him. It was at the cusp of integration in mm-hmm. Mississippi, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they. They didn't want a black person that was going to last run the last 35 yards backwards. Mm. It was held against him, right? Yeah. You know, he only scored 464 points at Jackson State. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> you know, he, the other thing about Walter that people, you know, particularly now because we're getting, you know, a few decades removed from when he played, but uh, Walter – not only was a great runner, he's one of the greatest blockers I ever saw. I mean, he didn't he just he didn't just block the edge rushers. He yeah. hurt them. I mean, he was something now. I remember his agent, his agent was a Hattiesburg attorney named Bud Holmes. And he called me at the Hattiesburg American one day and said, "Well, they're having pro day up at Jackson State. You want to ride up there with me?" I said, sure, I'll ride up there with you. And back then, this is 1972 or three. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the football was integrated in, in Mississippi. I mean, State, Ole Miss, Southern Miss all had black players, but they only had three or four. Right. And, and, Jackson State, for, on their senior day, there were 24 prospects. Wow. 24 pro prospects that had to run the 40. Well, of course, when the, and, and, and two of the top six draft picks were from Jackson State, Walter and Robert Brazil, another oh, yeah. NFL pro football. Great player for the Oilers, right? Yeah. So uh, there are 24 people lined up ready to run the 40-yard dash, and Walter goes first. And he knocks off about three, four, 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 point four, five, forty yard dashes, and then he goes over and sits on his helmet uh, and watches the other guys do it. And then he he uh, they finish and they're about to move to the next thing. And Walter said, "You hear that high pitched voice of his said, hey, y'all, watch this.'" And he gets to, he gets down in the forty yard dash and in, at the start of the forty yard dash gets in a handstand and handstands forty yards. <laughs> and you know I tell this story a lot. In speaking. Wait a minute, explain this. I got to visually think about this. He gets on his hands and handstands the forty yards. He, like runs he never 40 came, yards. never never rose up to run. He just handstands. I'm talking about he's erect. And I mean, doing a handstand. I mean, he's not on his knees. He never gets up. He, <laughs> he handstands forty yards. Oh and I tell God. I tell that story a lot when I'm doing speaking engagements, and people say, invariably they say, "Well, what was his time?" 
And I said, hell, I don't know what his time was, but it was a world record. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I can tell you that because ain't nobody else can do it. You know? Oh, my Lord, I've never heard of such a thing. Uh, he was just amazing. Yeah, Walter, uh, when he signed his first contract with the Bears, uh, I, I, you, you probably couldn't do this these days, uh, but, but at that time, his agent, Bud Holmes, had a Learjet in Hattiesburg, and he said, do you want to ride up there for the contract signing? And I said, well, who's on the plane? He said, well, it'll be me, you, the pilot, and his mama, Walter's mama, the sweetest lady who ever lived. And uh, Aileen Payton was her name. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, sure. And she had never been in an airplane before. And uh, I remember I held her hand taking off and landing uh, <laughs> because she was scared, frightened to death. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah, so I knew Walter pretty well in the Super Bowl in in um, New Orleans at the Superdome. Uh, when the Bears were, beat the Patriots, yeah, just yeah, just and I'll, I'll you know, I'll never forgive Dit Ditka for not giving him the ball there and letting him score the touchdown instead of the three hundred and thirty pound nose tackle. Uh, refrigerator. Yeah, player. knowing Walter the way you did, do you think that really bothered Walter that he didn't get a chance it to score a touchdown? It bothered the hell out of him. He, he, at first, he wouldn't come out for the press conference. You yeah. know, it, it, in fact, Bud Holmes had to go in to the locker room and t talk him into coming out and doing the post game press conference. Hmm. Yeah. It well, you think about you think about you know his career began with slights, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. he was fighting it from the very beginning, coming out of high school, and here it is in the Super Bowl, the greatest moment for the for the Bears and for his own career. And you know, they choose not to give him the ball on the goal line to score a touchdown. And people forget that early in his career, they were terrible. Right. Right. I remember uh, it was either his rookie year or his second season. I, I was in Chicago at Soldier Field, and it, in the rushing race. Uh, came down to seems like it was him and OJ. Mm -hmm. I think you're uh, right. Yeah. And and and, uh, and he sprained an ankle in the uh, early in the game and and didn't get enough yards and and he finished second in the NFL rushing run on a team that won like two or three games. You know, they right. were those were some bad bear teams he played in played on early in his career. Right. He's the best. He's the best all-around football player I've ever seen. People don't know this, but he punted and kicked off for and kicked extra points at Jackson State. Wow. I think he. I don't know. He threw six or seven touchdown passes with the Bears. I mean, he could he could really throw the ball too. And like I say, he was the best blocker. I can't imagine how good a strong safety he would have been if he'd have hmm. played on the other right. side of the ball. He's just just a no. fabulous, fabulous player who who worked harder at it than anybody else. Mm -hmm. Archie Manning told me he one time uh, they got together in Jackson and he was going to try to do Peyton's off season workout with him, mm -hmm. and and Archie said I, I lasted ten minutes. He said, I was throwing up after 10 minutes. <laughs> well, that's what sets the greatness, the greatness of sweetness apart, right? You know, and Walter, right. Walter was running up those hills with, yeah. you know, with that chip on his shoulder to show everybody. Yeah. He, uh, up the, uh, the levee at the Pearl River, which runs right through Jackson. 